grace and peace to you in abundance for our study may i read to you from the third letter of john verses 1 and 2 to my dear friend gaius whom i love in the truth dear friend i pray that you may enjoy good health and all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well there is a confusion about getting only favors from god and what is the cure for this confusion there is nothing wrong in aspiring greater spiritual heights in christian experience as we advance and progress in our worldly knowledge we need also to progress we need to advance and mature spiritually but it all has to be on the new testament pattern our maturity our development and our advancement has to be on the model of jesus on the model of the disciples and according to what the apostles have done and so we need to emulate jesus his disciples and the apostles in our teaching and in our living there may be a part of the gospel in our teaching and preaching today but we cannot mix our own ways we cannot mix our own methods we cannot mix our own plans and solutions to our teaching and preaching in verse 2 st john is wishing gaius that all may go well with him or you may prosper in every way first we should notice that this is a customary or it is a, a conventional greeting and secondly this greeting has a comparison it is between spiritual well being and physical health and all that is related to physical and material aspects the comparison therefore is to be kept in its proper perspective one cannot emphasize one thing to the exclusion of the other what are some of the lessons we can learn from this conventional greeting which is not a doctrinal statement the first thing that we can learn is that we should seek god himself rather than his blessings today we have festivals of blessing we come across festivals of favors we have festivals of anointing we have festivals of miracles we have meetings of healing and deliverance etc 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 all these are conducted today in all these things we should remember that god loves us you should remember that god loves you in the midst of all these god will bless you and me according to his desire and wish and not according to your own desire not according to the ways in which some preacher preaches god is interested in you and he will bless you according to his word this is uppermost therefore we should constantly come back 
to the word of God and to the pattern of Jesus, the disciples and the apostles. Jesus' greatest promise to us is his presence. He said in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you even to the end of the age. The promise of Jesus therefore more than anything is his presence. He has not promised to bless all the people with good health always and plenty of wealth if they follow him. Some teach that God wants Christians to be prosperous financially, always enjoy good health, advance and grow in every way, every aspect of life. Did Jesus ever say that? Did the apostles ever teach this kind of a thing? Trying to manipulate God into giving you what you want just doesn't work. The important message is never place your trust in anything or anyone other than God himself. Because God in Jesus has said, I am with you always. Now why did Jesus claim this? Because God has all the power and it is only God who can ultimately fill you, ultimately fill me and it is only God who can satisfy us, only God. Now some advocate that you can be healed or you can be successful, you can be fruitful if you pray with faith. If you believe totally and pray, you will get what you want. You will get what you ask for. The Bible is full of examples of faith who endured sickness, who endured suffering. And these are the people who loved God, who served God, but God allowed them to go through one kind of suffering or another in their lives. We should only read Hebrews chapter 11 verses 35 to 38. How the faithful people of God have suffered here how they have endured and how they were made subject to all sorts of torture and finally they were martyred. Who wants this kind of a life? Of course, none. Which preacher has become popular by preaching on a text like this? It's not easy to touch upon a hard passage such as this. To go to another example, Jesus once told his disciples along with the crowd that followed him. He said, if you want to follow me and if you want to be my disciple, this is what Jesus said. Let me read from Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Then Jesus called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone, irrespective of who you are, Jesus said, whether you are a disciple or whether you are one of the crowd, whoever you are, would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. How often do we hear this kind of a message? When Jesus said that you must deny yourself and take up the cross, this phrase taking up the cross meant that you will face suffering in life. There will be difficult times for you in life. And this is what Jesus 
is telling the disciples and the crowd. Jesus did not cheat or deceive anyone to follow him by offering an easy life. He was real. He never said, you follow me, you have favors. You follow me, you have blessings. You follow me, you have prosperity. You follow me, you have health and healing. Yes, you may have all these when you follow Jesus Christ. But they are only incidental. That is what we should remember. They are only by the way. But when you follow Jesus Christ, what is your offering? Suffering and rejection. And that is the centrality of the gospel. How to preach this? And when we do preach, how many will follow us? And many people did not follow Jesus Christ because he said, you deny yourself, take up the cross and follow me. And this kind of a preaching will not pull a crowd. This kind of a preaching will not make me a very popular preacher because no one wants to suffer in this life. How is your preaching, pastor, evangelist or a missionary? We should preach the truth and the truth is in the word of God. One night, Rabbi Isaac was told in his dream to go to a far off place and dig under a certain bridge for some hidden treasure. And this rabbi didn't take the dream seriously. But this dream kept on coming back four or five times. So, the rabbi, whose name we have already heard, Isaac, you know, he made a journey and he went to this bridge which was far away. And when he went to the bridge, to his surprise, he found that the bridge was heavily guarded both day and night. And because this bridge was leading to the king's palace. And when the guards observed that Rabbi Isaac was coming here every morning, they asked the rabbi, what is your intention of visiting this place? Then when the rabbi told the guards about his dream, they laughed their heart out. And they said, if you and I have to live according to our dreams, we don't have to be here. I would have been somewhere else. And then the captain of the guard told him that he had a dream that he should go to a place called Krakow. And the dream said, and dig for a treasure in the kitchen of one Isaac, who's father's name was Ezekiel and having heard this the rabbi was stunned and he thanked the captain for sharing the dream with him and uh, the rabbi came back home and went to the corner of his kitchen to dig and when he dug there he found the treasure the treasure that he went out to seek and that could last him for the rest of his life. Where is the treasure? It's right there in the word. We just need to look at the word and dig to be satisfied with the treasure of God. The confusion is that we are going to places we are trying to seek satisfaction in many a thing today. But we need to come back to God's word. And may this be true of us that we will in our spiritual quest not have to go very far.
somebody has said the spiritual quest is a journey without distance what is your special need today don't go to places come to jesus come to the word of god and your inner longings will be satisfied let us pray father in heaven forgive us for going from one place to another seeking favors seeking blessings but you have come to us in your word the word has become flesh in the lord jesus christ and through his spirit you are teaching us so help us that our spirituality may depend upon what our lord jesus christ taught us what the apostles taught us and what the word is teaching us to that end we pray that you will give us humility not to travel a long distance for our spirituality but to come to your word and to the lord jesus christ in his name and for his sake we pray amen